Hello, hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Welcome to the live stream. Well, it might be a different day depending on when you're watching this. But as you guys are coming on, please leave me a comment in the chat. Let me know where you're watching from. Let me know how you're doing today. I'm going to talk in the beginning of this video about why I'm doing carnivore right now, how long I plan to do it, what made me make that decision. And then I have a ton of questions from Instagram that people have sent in. But you guys are also welcome to throw comments in the chat also as we go through the broadcast. So <clears throat> I will look in on those. But essentially, I am on day five of carnivore right now. I decided I would go back to it, not because anything really horrible happened um, with my food, with reactions or anything. I went through a really rough patch with my daughter. I talked about it a lot on Instagram, not necessarily so much on YouTube. But she had to have a surgery. We had started having issues with her ear again. She had to have surgery. And when she gets anesthesia, and I don't do laughing gas, I'm really careful with what kind of anesthetic I let them give her. But whenever she gets anesthesia, it's really hard to deal with her. If you're new to my channel, um, she has non-speaking autism. And so she just has a really hard time detoxing from the anesthesia. And so that was emotionally just really, really taxing. Number one, to kind of go through putting her under and then doing a surgery and then dealing with her coming off anesthesia. And I just mentally started to feel really down. I mean, I, I was a mess. I, I don't know how many of you guys, and if you're on, if you're watching, please throw something in the chat. I don't see any comments in the chat yet. And I do want to know if you guys are able to hear me, if we're good. Um, so I'm not just talking into space. It says that there are some people here, but I don't see any comments yet. But essentially I went through this thing with my daughter and this was, um, more towards the beginning of this month. And I just haven't been having the mental clarity. I started to feel depressed and kind of like I did before I did carnivore. And that again, could have been just totally situational. Okay, I say, yay, okay, you guys are all on. I see Jimmy's on, Bonnie, Steve, Russ, thank you, Terry. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for commenting. Let me know that letting me know you're here. So I was just mentally not feeling well. And um, again, it could be situational. And but I was like, you know what? I want to just try to see what happens if I take the plants out um, that I had been kind of experimenting with. Like I said, I had the one hiccup. Um, that I did a video on that's, if you look at my channel, it says painful symptoms return. Uh, hi, Claudia. Hi, Lisa. But that was the big hiccup I had with adding in plants. And I think it was because it was a, a powdered drink that had a bunch of other crap in it. It wasn't real food. I think real food is best. And I just had a horrible um, reaction to that. And I, I will say this one other thing the, the other, the thing that kind of tipped me over the edge to say, I'm going to go back and do some carnivore um, for at least seven days. I am planning on going louder because I'm longer because I'm only five days in. Hi, Nicole. Hi, AMT. I'm only five days in here, uh, but I am going to go longer. We'll see what happens. Uh, you know, I said, I'm going to do 30 days of carnivore like two and a half years ago. <laughs> And then I let two and a half years later, you know, <laughs> it's one of those things. So we'll see what happens. But I also had like some, a little bit of dry skin underneath my mouth, which it, you couldn't even see it. Like no one could see it. And a little bit of eczema that was popping up on this finger. This is my eczema finger that it will get eczema if something is going on. So I was like between and stress is the other thing. Like we always want to pinpoint like, diet and it's very important in my opinion, but I think just like this high stress situation, um, that I was in and maybe letting a few other things in my diet that, uh, you know, didn't really agree with me. I think that was like, okay, I'm going to go back into carnivore. All right. I'm going to, I'll, I'll be bad. I'll answer some questions here. I'm not, it's not bad. I just, I love interacting with you guys. Dan says he lost lots of weight on carnivore. That's awesome. Jimmy, I had COVID and my taste changed for a week. I wasn't eating much. I wanted veggies. Ah, interesting. I started drinking Zevia. Happy I'm back to all meat now. I lost, I still lost weight. I'm at 140 pounds loss. That is freaking phenomenal, Jimmy. Um, you know, so one thing that happened with me at the beginning of this year, I'm still not ready to talk about like the whole story behind it. It was kind of this traumatic event. 
but I had to get a procedure done. It wasn't anything to do with diet. That's why I haven't disclosed it. And maybe I will later on <laughs> down the road, but essentially I had to take antibiotics and I've heard that COVID, um, I hope, oh God, I'm going to get like flagged. I'm going to get taken off the freaking inter internet for saying the word. Um, <laughs> God bless. But it will, from what I have heard, it can wipe out your gut bacteria. And so when I took antibiotics, it wiped out my gut bacteria. And I started craving vegetables. After my gut bacteria got totally wiped out, I was like, I want vegetables. Um, and so that's interesting that you said that you had that experience, Jimmy, because yeah, I think that there's something with wiping out your gut bacteria. Now, this is the one thing I have done since the antibiotic thing, and I was doing it before then, is I've been really careful with adding in um, probiotics and really, really working on my gut health. So you guys know I did the Thrive Gut Health Test. I actually did one um, like after I took the antibiotics so that I could get a new um, probiotic based on that new set of gut bacteria. So, and I did do the Viome test. I know I owe you guys a video about the Viome test. <laughs> I just haven't done it yet. It was a little underwhelming and I was thinking that I was going to be getting a custom probiotic, a possibility from them, but they don't give you a custom probiotic. They only give you like a custom supplement blend. So they wanted to give me like the supplement that had like milk thistle and just like all this stuff in it. And I'm like, I don't really think I want to do that. Um, but hello, Esther. Hi, everyone saying hello in the chat. Um, but yeah, so if you do something to wipe out your gut bacteria, it's even more important to replenish that, um, that gut bacteria. So because we can have gut bacteria that will make us hold on to extra weight. It can make our immune system lower. It is a real thing. And I've been diving into the science a lot more. Um, let's see, this is a relevant question. Are you eating anything other than ground beef, sardines and eggs? Yeah, I am. I've been putting my meals on Instagram this whole week, like breakfast, lunch and dinner. And next week, you guys, I will have a video for you showing exactly what I have eaten this first seven days of carnivore. So it'll be seven days as of Sunday that I've done it because today is Friday and today's day five. <laughs> and so I've been documenting everything that I've been eating since I've switched back to carnivore. And if you go on my Instagram stories daily, I'm like, this is what I'm having, this is what I'm having. Um, and I'm recording my blood glucose. So that's another interesting piece of this puzzle that I'll talk more about in the video next week. But I have been eating salmon roe. I've been eating beef, of course, lamb, goat. Um, I've had scallops, bacon, butter, suet. I've been doing some raw cheese. I can do really well with raw cheese. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Broth, of course, my homemade broth. Lots of egg yolks. Um, so I, I, you know, you'll see a lot of people that do just like a beef only carnivore diet. For me, I didn't feel my best that way. Some people say they feel their best and that works for them. And we're all so different. So I really encourage you to experiment. As you guys know, I'm the queen of, <laughs> of experimenting. But yeah, just to figure out what works for you. And I, I do best with a varied carnivore diet um, that just really just works for me. Um, AMT, do you miss veggies after being off them for five days? I'm not going to lie. Yesterday, I really wanted an avocado. Now, avocado is a fruit. I actually don't really. That's a great question because I have not missed the vegetables. I cook vegetables still for my family, but I have not missed the vegetables. I've missed like the fruit, um, which is avocado and olives. I do. I have eaten some artichoke. Um, but yeah. Let's see, Esther, would you mind if I share your video receipt on my blog? Of course. Oh, sure, Esther, that would be awesome. Thank you for asking me. I really appreciate that. So that's really the story with like carnivore. I'm five days in the eczema on my, I think it was eczema, dry skin on my lip is gone. The um, eczema on my finger is totally gone. Just after freaking today is day five. Um, I do feel really good. There's a certain amount of, like I said, this is kind of why I decided to go back to it for at least seven days. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to take it into another week because I think my blood glucose has had a little bit of an issue adjusting. I am trying to 
eat more protein this time around than what I was doing with carnivore, which was eating just a smaller amount of protein and really large amount of fat. I'm trying to see if I can tweak with that a little bit. So you'll see that in the video next week, like more protein, still eating good amount of fat, like no, never less than a hundred grams of fat per day. Like that's a bare minimum for me. Um, but trying to do a little more protein and my blood sugar is kind of like, not, not the best, not in the best place. It's been running higher than I would like to see it. And I've been recording that. So I'll show that in the video next week. But I have been posting all that on my Instagram stories and I've gotten some messages from other people that are like, oh yeah, I actually switched over to doing a little bit of a higher uh, protein carnivore. And I saw that for like a week with my blood sugar and then it dropped back down um, to a better range. So it could be something you're kind of adjusting to. Now I was eating more protein with the vegetables and my blood sugar was staying stable. Now the other things I have added in, which is the other reason I wanted to add a little more protein and just do it as a carnivore is that I've been working really hard again on my gut health doing the thrive thing, but also the digestive enzymes and the HCL. And I've also done the butyrate supplement as well. There was a video I put out yesterday with Steve Wright, and we're going to be doing an, a YouTube live on June 21st, I think is the day we decided. So I'll announce that and everything, but he's been helping me with making sure my enzymatic function is working properly because I was not absorbing the nutrients from the protein. I was not breaking down the protein properly. And that's another reason why I would feel so exhausted after my meals. Now my blood sugar might be running a little bit higher than I would like, which is like nineties, you know, a hundred. Um, and that's fasted in the morning. It always goes down during the day, but in the morning fasted, um, and I did have fasted blood sugar between like 70 and 85 before this. So I'm not someone, this is definitely like, okay, I went carnivore again and now my blood sugar is a little bit higher. This is a definite like, okay, <laughs> this is what's really happening. Um, cause I know some people will say, well, that's okay. It's Dawn effect. Yeah, but it's not normal for me. It's, you know, kind of what I'm used to. But yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of the thing. I know I was like going somewhere with what I just said and I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, I'm going to spread it into a week too, to see if that blood sugar kind of normalizes, goes down a little bit. Oh, uh, thank you, Debbie. Debbie says working with kids with autism is my passion. You are amazing. Thank you for sharing your journey. And Debbie, I appreciate people that have a passion to work with children like mine because, you know, as parents, like I said, with this really stressful month I've had with having to do surgery for my daughter and then dealing with the aftermath of the, it was like the aftermath of surgery is always way worse than the actual surgery. Because like I said, she has reactions to the anesthesia. She just doesn't detox as well. It's, you know, just how her, her body works. Um, but it's hard. And I have people here, you know, we were, I have people that come here and that help um, and that work with her and they love her and they believe in her. And that is just invaluable when you have people that, that will believe in your child and work with them. So anybody that works with um, children with special needs is a special person in my heart. So uh, I think that's it about carnivore. You guys definitely stay tuned. I will do a video. I'm going to show you guys everything that I've eaten um, in a seven day period. Like I said, I'm going to stretch it out to at least 14 days. It may go longer. <laughs> it may go longer. We're going to, we're just going to test it out, see how it goes. Um, I'll still keep doing my gut health testing. I might even do a gut health test with thrive at the end of the 14 days to see, you know, if I have, you know, if things have shifted dramatically in a negative way, or if it's still good, I will let you guys know for sure. And hello, South Africa. But like I mentioned, I have some questions from Instagram and you guys are welcome to pop in questions as well. And I'm just going to kind of in no particular order answer these. Oh, I was, that was what, that's where I was going. I've been working on, um, the digestive enzymes and the stomach acid and all that stuff. So I think that has helped me as well to absorb the nutrients from the protein, absorb everything that I'm eating a little bit more. And I wish I had started those kinds of protocols before, um, like in the very beginning of carnivore. Cause I wonder if that would have prevented me from having to go super high fat 
for so long? I don't know. I don't know. There's just like this big puzzle piece. So um, everything I talk about is in the information section below. If you guys are curious, you can always ask me a question, leave me a comment. I really just want to help people and put out information. So please feel free to ask me questions, leave me comments, any of that stuff. And yeah, wow. It's so cool to have people from all over the world. I've got the UK and South Africa. So cool. Okay. So this is a question from Instagram. Like I said, no particular order here. <laughs> if you submitted a question, I didn't prioritize any order. Um, Bonnie says, is it worth checking blood glucose? Will it help in losing weight? And here's the other thing. I woke up this morning, three pounds lighter. Um, but my blood glucose has been higher than normal, but I lost weight and I feel really good. So I'm kind of torn. I think that there's, if your blood glucose is running like 120, you know, those numbers, that's not good. But if, you know, up to 90s, 100, I think you can still lose weight. I think it's still totally possible. People are like, oh, you have to keep it low in order to lose weight. I don't, when I'm, my blood sugar was low, this is, this goes, I'll answer Nicole's question because it goes along with what I'm saying. Nicole says, did you seem to gain weight when you were high fat? Not sure if you answered that on previous videos. Yes, Nicole, I did. Um, I did, I did a video recently called why I gained or how I gained 20 pounds on the carnivore diet. And I talk about this. Now, the other thing is I was doing way too much fasting. I wasn't strategic with my fasting. I am doing a little fasting now, but I'm very strategic with it about the timing of when I do it. Um, all it's, it's totally different, but there was the pandemic <laughs> plus the, um, everything shut down and I quit doing as much activity and then I went high fat at the same time. So yeah, I gained weight when I did the higher fat. So, um, but cause Shanti here says I do better with high fat because I have more energy. Yeah. My hormones were like, thank you. <laughs> my hormones were like down. My, um, thyroid was down. All those numbers were like down, down, down. And as I went high fat, got my cycle back within two weeks, hormones went back up. So yeah, I gained weight. I also quit doing all fasting. Um, but it could have been all those other factors that kind of compounded and it did amazing for my hormones. And I still eat, you know, like I said, the, the minimum amount of fat, um, that I'm will. my number is like a hundred, I will not go below a hundred grams of fat per day. Like that's it. That's the bottom for me. It's probably usually around 150 grams per day, um, is kind of what I've been averaging since I've been doing carnivore this last five days. Um, Jimmy says my menu is consistently steak, ground beef, salmon, and sardines. I'm still OMAD. It just works better for me. Do you think OMAD is okay long-term? I, I don't know. The jury's still out on this one. Dr. Mindy Pels, who I had on my podcast, she was talking about this in a video she did recently. I love watching her videos because she talks about fasting and, you know, she doesn't like OMAD long-term because your body just gets used to, this one meal and it, it will downregulate, right? So if you are only giving your body a signal once per day to burn the energy, it's eventually going to get used to it. And your metabolism could slow down because you're only giving that signal once a day. Um, and she also says to change things up that the body, if you're trying to lose weight, variability is important, like your, your eating time. So if you always do OMAD in the afternoon, switch it to the morning, and that could be a way to break through a stall, um, or add the extra meal for a little bit and do two meals one day and then one meal the next day. You know, that's, I think that that is, um, better for your metabolism. If you still have a good amount of weight to lose, just so you don't get stuck. Um, I think OMAD, you know, if you love it, it's a, it's a lifestyle for you. It makes you feel good, then cool. But if you're still trying to lose weight and you're kind of stuck, that might be a situation where you want to add in just some variability. Does that make sense? Okay. You said yes. Thank you. Okay, cool. Um, Dos Americanos, which I think her name is Hannah asks, would you ever take DHEA for hormones? And my answer is I will test. I would test that first. <laughs> I wouldn't just, I don't believe in taking anything unless you test first to see, do I actually need this? Um, and the DHEA is a hormone. So I really want to be careful to add, adding in exogenous hormones. There's a lot of people that will 
add um, progesterone cream as you get early, you know, more into perimenopause and menopause, because it really can help tremendously with sleep and energy and mood. It naturally decreases as we age. Um, but you would want to test it first. Some people can produce a good amount of progesterone still into their late 40s, early 50s. You want to make sure that you're low in it. And with DHEA, you have to be very careful with dosing. I know Metabolic Mike has a DHEA supplement, and he has a whole master class on how to dose DHEA. Because if you take too much of it, that could cause androgenic problems. You can get facial hair. It's <laughs> So that's my thought on that. Um, another question from Instagram thoughts on pre and probiotics. Are they necessary eating a meat based keto? Um, I, the jury's still out on that. This is one of those that I say, try it out for yourself. This is why I've been kind of, um, doing the thrive test and doing custom probiotics. I switch between the thrive probiotics and the microbiome labs, pro probiotics kind of going back between the two. And it did improve things for me. So I think it's just one of those things you test it out for yourself. And those of you doing the Thrive test, if you have done it, don't look at the food recommendations because they tell you not to eat meat a lot. Of, I can't tell you the like number of messages I've gotten. And my test said not to eat meat. It said to eat like just quail and turkey. I was like, no. Um, it says that because that's all you've been eating <laughs> is red meat. Um, so eat a variety, eat some lamb, eat some goat, eat uh, fish, eat, eat a little more variety, get marrow, get the cartilage. That's a prebiotic fiber, believe it or not. The cartilage, that's a really good prebiotic. So you don't necessarily need, um, these things. And you could also do kefir. You could do, um, yogurt. You get some raw dairy from a local farm. I do great with raw dairy. I always would try to do pasteurized dairy and be like, Oh, I can't do this. Everything hurts. And it's a, it's bad. I can do raw dairy and it's amazing. So you can make your own yogurt, kefir, all those things. Um, that could be a good probiotic too, or you could do the thrive route, but I think it can be helpful for some people because, um, just for some people doing just a meat-based diet only is not enough to heal the gut. You need sometimes more help. And if you're still having, um, constipation or any loose stools or floating stools or any of that stuff, it's worth, going that step further, right? Because you're already like, I feel like eating a meat based diet, you're already working pretty hard to do well now that you after you do it for a while, it's like the easiest thing in the world. Um, <laughs> but in the beginning, when you're really trying to heal, it does feel like, oh, this is hard. You know what I mean? Oh, thank you, AMT. Your hair looks, I just washed my hair for you guys. It had been a week and a half and I was like, I have to wash my hair before this live stream or it's, it, it was not good. So <laughs> Thank you for this. Um, Esther says, this is exactly what I'm thinking about at the moment. Avoid the body adjusting to OMAD, Jason Fung, Mandy, Mindy Pels versus giving the body a routine to have it easier to stick to circadian rhythm. Yes, Mike Mutzel, you just mentioned all the peeps. Yeah, um, circadian rhythms are so important and uh, giving your body variation, switching things up, doing different eating windows. And for, for women, you know, for men too, men need variation too. Uh, their hormones will also downregulate. Metabolism will also downregulate. For women, it just happens faster because we are supposed to reproduce. And so there, there, there's that biological reason as to why we will see a quicker shift in uh, hormone downregulation than a man will because our bodies were designed to carry on um, carry babies. And so uh, if the, the woman's not being fed, she can't get pregnant. Okay. So this is why I think women need, you know, having a, a varied schedule with your, with your fasting, with your eating is super important. And that's a huge mistake that I made with doing a lot of fasting it was like, I just would do it to, regardless of the day of the month or um, time or how I was feeling. I would, I'm just, I'm super like, I'm going to work my ass off and do what I have to do. I'm, I'm a put your head down and do it kind of a person. That's just me. And so I did that with fasting and uh, thinking it was going to pay off. And it started having a lot of negative returns for me. Now I am fasting again. I'll tell you guys, I'm doing a little bit of fasting, but it's totally different. It is very strategic. Um, Nicole says, I've been working on my hormones and trying to regulate my cycle. 
I know that high fat will help, but at the same time, I'm obese and need to lose weight. So there is a doctor that I've been following and I actually, so I'll tell you guys, I just did a consult with her yesterday. And so I'm going to be trying some of her uh, protocols for anti-aging, but she works with women also. Um, and she says ketosis and you can be in a calorie deficit. If you are obese, then you're going to drop weight and it's not going to affect your hormones as long as you're in that therapeutic level of ketosis. Now, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's worth a try. It's just hard when you do a higher fat diet to find satiety for some people. Um, that's why I feel like for doing carnivore, for me, it was always really hard to find satiety doing carnivore and super, super high fat. You know what I mean? Um, so sometimes that little bit of fiber that you have can help you stay really high fat and, you know, be in that calorie deficit and not be like hungry all the time. I hope that makes sense to you guys. And Nicole says, I relate to everything you went through. So your information is very useful. Thank you, Nicole. And I, I appreciate you guys so much. I, you know, I read the comments probably more than I should. <laughs> um, but it just is, it's cool to have like this community of people and just share uh, what helps me and then share, talk about other people. Like I get messages constantly of like, I tried this and it helped like this morning. I made that decision of to stretch carnivore out another week because I had gotten messages in my Instagram inbox from other people and women who were like, oh yeah, my blood sugars were a little bit higher when I tried to add a little more protein, but then they went down the second week. So I'm like, all right, well then it looks like, it looks like carnivore is going to be stretched into at least two weeks. And like I said, it may go a little bit longer. Okay. So, oh, hello from India. Wow. This is, it's so cool. It's so cool to get to see you guys all over the world. Um, let's see one more question on this page. Uh, Jackie says, do you have trouble with high blood sugar? I mean, not real. I don't really consider nineties and a hundred high, to be honest with you. When you look at someone who's diabetic, that's, it's a little high for me. I don't really think it's good. Um, but I know how to get that down. I know if I wanted to get it down today, I would just eat like a lot of fat and take my protein way down and it would go down like quickly. Um, I can get my blood sugar to go into the sixties. I can get my ketones up ridiculously high. Um, I can do all that stuff. So, but does it make me feel my best? Am I hungry? Am I gaining weight? Like that? It's just like a whole trade-off. Um, but no, I don't think I really have trouble with high blood sugar. Let's see. Jimmy says, yes, it's hard. My beginning weight was 527. Now in the 300s, just stick with high fat. It works. Woohoo, Jimmy. That's amazing. That is so amazing. I just want to keep watching your journey and see you getting better and better. And I, I know you will. And it's been cool to see Jimmy. I feel like Jimmy's been coming on my channel for at least the last eight months or so, maybe a little bit longer coming in on my live streams. And it, it's so it, inspiring to hear people losing weight. Uh, let's see. Here's a question. It says, I think I'm having gallbladder tech attacks going to see a gastro next week is high fat out. And a lot of people have gallbladder issues and they just don't even know until they try to eat a lot more fat. So this is again, I mean, go see your doctor. You can get an ultrasound. See if your gallbladder has a lot of stones, a lot of sludge, this could be a possibility. You may want to do some gallbladder flushing, some gallbladder cleanses, which are not fun, but that is something that I would do before I would get my gallbladder taken out. Um, support like the uh, digestive enzymes that I use that are linked in the information section below this video can also help with gallbladder. Um, ox bile can help. Tudka can help. And I don't think high fat is out, but I think you do have to go into it a bit more gradually. Like you have to, you have to be a little more gradual about, um, bumping up the fat because your liver will eventually adjust, but how long that's going to take depends on the health of your liver, depends on the health of your body. Um, so it's something you probably would want to work with a coach on to bump the fat up gradually. And Jimmy says, I learned so much from you, Sarah. Can't thank you enough. Oh, thank you, Jimmy. Uh, Gabriel says, what are your thoughts on combining different proteins in a single meal? I mean, I do it all the time. My lunch yesterday was salmon roe, 
with a ribeye that was rare, like almost raw. And it was just a few ounces of the ribeye with um, one egg and like four egg yolks. So yeah, I, and I do bacon wrapped scallops. I do, you know, I'll do um, bacon and steak, bacon and chicken. Like I think combining proteins is like totally fine. Um, totally, totally fine. Let's see. Um, carnivore and constipation. How can I go to the toilet regularly on carnivore? This again is another place where you need some digestive support. If you've gotten past adaptation, if you've gotten past like that initial 30, 60 days, it would definitely be um, worth it to work on your gut with somebody. And it could be as simple as just taking those digestive enzymes that I, the ones I like are linked under the video, um, in the information section that I've seen work wonders for people. And if you guys do get those digestive enzymes, they will add you to a Facebook group where a health coach will help you to dose them correctly. And if they don't work for you, they'll give you a hundred percent of your money back guarantee. Like, and I've seen them do that for people who are like, Oh, this isn't going to work for you. So if you're constipated or if you have loose stools, that's a, a route I would look into. And then um, watch the video I put out yesterday with Steve Wright, where we actually talked about this constipation, loose stools and floating stools on a carnivore diet and what to do. Michelle says, I stumbled upon your live stream today by accident. I'm normally at work, but we got off today. Company day off. I work at Dexacom CGM and love watching your videos. Cool. Yeah. And I have, a, <laughs> I have a CGM in my bedroom. This is like an old story. Like people know this about me. I keep CGMs in my bedroom and then I don't use them. Cause I'm like, I kind of don't know if I want to put myself through, um, wearing CGM, but I might strap it on for next week doing carnivore for week two. Uh, I might do that. I might do it. If I do, I'll make a video. Cause I'm definitely making a video next week about the first seven days of carnivore. And so I might do seven days with a CGM on doing carnivore. Uh, vintage gypsy says, what is your opinion on PE diet? I think it's another one you got to test out for yourself. I don't think it's sustainable long-term to eat that much protein and limit your fat for a lot of people, especially if you're doing it in the framework of a carnivore diet, because eventually your hormones will begin to suffer. I think if you're going to do a PE diet or a protein sparing modified fast, one of these diets, it's something that you want to make sure you have refeed days of and like refeed on fat. Um, and you don't, I'm not saying to eat 3000 calories on your refeed day. You can keep your calories or your energy the same on those refeed days. But if I think if someone wants to do the PE diet, it could be helpful to help them lose weight, but they definitely need to have some fat refeed days in there to keep the body, um, keep the hormones happy. So that's my opinion on it as of today. <laughs> um, Esther says, my gallbladder has been removed and I already have, and I have no issues with fat. However, to be fair, it's gone for years already. Yeah. So the, I mean, the liver will make an adaptation is the thing. The liver will adapt to it. Um, it will create those kind of ducts and create the extra bile for you guys. So it takes a while. I know Kelly Hogan doesn't have, um, a gallbladder and she does fine. I don't think she does super high fat though, but she's, she's carnivore with no gallbladder. Uh, let's see. This person wants to know how have you improved your sleep? Oh Lord, where do I start with that one? So I quit coffee. I, I know I owe you guys a coffee video. So <laughs> if you want to know about the coffee thing, put a little, co put coffee in the comments, even if you're watching the replay, um, put coffee in the comments. So I know if there's an interest in this, like quitting coffee thing, but, uh, I had quit coffee when I first started working with, um, Stephanie keto person, and she's a good friend of mine. We still talk every day. We're going to have some collabs coming up soon, but I had quit coffee initially with her. And then I kind of went back to it and didn't tell anybody. <laughs> Um, and then I quit it again in the beginning of this year and it was painful. It was really painful. And my sleep actually got worse when I quit for a little while and then it got way better. So quitting coffee has helped me with the sleep. Um, mouth taping is a new thing that I do. And it's amazing how much better, um, the mouth taping makes my sleep. I get so much great deep sleep. I also take the upgraded formulas, magnesium, 
that magnesium is so ridiculously good. You guys, if you want to get that, my discount code is YOGI in all caps over at Upgrade Formulas, but their magnesium is amazing. It helps me sleep really well. I keep the bedroom cold. I have blackout curtains. Um, I have really good sleep hygiene. So I go to bed every night, either by nine o'clock or by nine 30. I am just, I sleep is a big priority to me. I put my phone like, so there's this feature on your phone. Um, I can't pull it up right now, but you can have your screen turn red at a certain time of day. So my screen turns like red starting at 7 PM until like 7 a.m. the next morning. So it like blocks out the blue light. Um, and I try to wear blue blockers when I watch TV, if I watch TV at night. So yeah, there's, there's a lot that I do. Okay. You guys are saying coffee. I will make the video. I've been like, I know I need to make that video. And then, yeah, I do wear an aura ring. Esther wants to know I do. So I like the night before last, I got two hours and 43 minutes of deep sleep and like an hour and a half of REM, which is crazy. You're just supposed to, after, you know, you get a certain age, an hour is good, but I got two hours and 43 minutes. Um, last night I got two hours and 15 minutes of deep and, um, like two hours of REM. So I, my sleep has gotten really good. So I've cut out the caffeine, uh, and this is on no carbs. Like, so I'm doing a carnivore week. There's zero carbs other than the ones that you get from cheese, uh, raw cheese, a little bit of, if, you know, is what I'm eating. So those things have happened, like helped me tremendously. And Shanti Marie says coffee only once in the AM for me and not every day sleep is good now. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm just, I am an abstainer. <laughs> I know myself. If I have coffee one day, it, it sneaks in there one day, then it's, I wake up and a month later, I've had coffee every day. It's just, it's one of those things. I'm like, it just can't be in my life. Um, so yeah, there's that. Let's see. Mrs. Grace says, will you be switching back to higher fat macros? I'm going to be trying to do uh, carnivore without going to super high fat, to be honest with you. I'm going to do my best over this next uh, next week to see if I can do it without going back to 200 grams of fat and like 60 grams of protein a day. I'm going to try. Michelle says, do you have a link for the magnesium, please? I think I have the upgraded formulas link in the information section below this video, if you pull it down and then use my code Yogi. So you can go to their website, upgrade formulas and get the magnesium. And my code is Yogi. It won't work on a subscription, my discount code, but, um, it's the best magnesium I've, I've ever had. I love it. Shem, are you going back to carnivore? Go back and watch the video from the very beginning. Cause yes, I'm doing that right now. I don't know if it's going to be long-term, but right now I am. And let's see, let me look at some of these other questions. Patron's mom, I'm working with a naturopath and we'll be doing the breath SIBO test. Have you heard of it? Yes, I have definitely heard of a SIBO test. And yeah, I, yeah, people can actually cure SIBO. They have using carnivore. Some people may need a little more digestive support. Again, I know I keep bringing up those enzymes in HCL. Um, HCL might be really helpful for someone with SIBO, but I would check those out. And, um, you know, sometimes the breath test is not hundred percent accurate, but a lot of people have SIBO and it can really, really be uncomfortable. Sarah says how to supplement calcium in the carnivorous breakdown. Uh, I don't, some people will do eggshells. They'll dehydrate eggshells. This is one thing you'd want to test because you don't know if you are low in calcium. It's pretty easy to get calcium if you do like raw dairy, like do raw cheese. Um, my calcium was never low when I even wasn't doing dairy because I did the hair tissue mineral analysis with upgraded formulas. Calcium and magnesium are inverse. So if you take too much calcium, you're going to throw your magnesium off. Um, so that's something you'd want to test and see, are you actually low in calcium? Do you actually need it? This, I feel like is another, one of those things that we've been told, like you have to have a calcium supplement. You have to have that. And I've seen people 
take calcium or do supplements and then do a hair tissue mineral analysis to get in that's upgraded formulas also is the one I've used and have tanked out their magnesium and their calcium is really high and that's not good. So these minerals are all inverse to one another, just like sodium and potassium are inverse to one another. And you don't want to have way too much sodium and not enough potassium. If your potassium is low, that could be affecting the thyroid, right? And so many other functions in the body. Let's see. Debbie says fatty acids break down into glucose. So don't stress over higher numbers. A triglyceride molecule has the glycerin backbone. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm, st I'm torn on, <laughs> I'm torn on the blood sugar thing to be honest with you. I really am torn on the blood sugar thing. So Barb says, I look tired and you hope I'm okay. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not tired. I'm good. Yeah. So let's see. Do, do, do. My problem with eating all beef is that I have to run to the bathroom. This, this is another Instagram question. So that should, if you have passed the initial adaptation phase, which should not be longer than like 30 days, then that's not normal. If you're, if you're still running to the bathroom every day, you definitely need some digestive support, maybe some HCL, um, probably definitely I would start with HCL and then possibly add in some enzymes and then maybe even the butyrate supplement that I recommend is called Tributin X. And those are all linked below this, but that's not normal, um, to have that. If you've passed the initial adaptation phase during adaptation phase, that can be a real problem for people. So I don't know, um, where this person is in their journey. Let's see. Sally says, is supplementing with butyrate necessary with gut issues if you are producing isobutyrate on carnivore? This is one thing. This is why I'm going to bring Steve from Healthy Gut back on next month on the 21st because he can break this down, explain it a little bit better. The butyrate that you would produce from being in a ketogenic state, which on carnivore, you're not always in a ketogenic state. Um, but that, that will produce ketones will help you produce butyrate and butter can help you to produce butyrate is different than, um, like taking a butyrate supplement or you have eating some uh, fiber and creating the short chain fatty acids in your gut. So we're going to talk about this more on the live stream that we do next month. And I think we touched on that a little bit in my first interview that I did with him. And let's see, best time to drink bone broth. I fast 16 to 16, four. I cure my acid reflux three months ago, carnivore diet. I mean, I think you can drink bone broth whenever you want it. <laughs> I drink it in the morning since I don't do coffee anymore. And it's a, just a nice way to wake up and a warm drink to have and throw an egg yolk in there. Sometimes a little butter, sometimes not, and just blend it up really nicely. Uh, so I think bone broth, you just drink it whenever you want it. Some people will drink it with a meal. Um, yeah. Let's see. Someone wants to know, is it normal to have an 18, six eating window and have my sugar be 59 and ketones 5.2? I mean, perhaps if an 18, six is not, oh, I guess. Yeah. Um, that could be, you're probably just, uh, adapting still, I would not necessarily expect to see that long term. And I don't know what you're eating. If you're eating like just all fat, then sure. Yeah. Yeah. Michael's corner says HCL cell. Uh, I'll put it up there. HCL guard is currently out of stock. Yeah, it is out of stock. The other brand that I like for HCL, if you're wanting a good HCL is thorn. I trust the thorn brand T H O R N E. Um, I trust their supplements over most anybody else. So, and hopefully the healthy gut will have their HCL back in stock really soon. Gabriel says when doing an OMAD or two meal, would it be better to have ground beef or steak? I mean, it just depends on how your body responds to that. Some people do better with ground beef because it digests a little bit easier. Um, some people, the steak is harder to break down. So yeah, if you're eating a lot of steak at once, that can be difficult for your body to break all that down. So it's hard to, I mean, it's hard to know. It's like, how is your body actually responding to that food? Let me see if I have any more questions. Um, I think I actually got all the questions that people said. I mean, I got one that was like, what about fiber? I'm like, well, we don't necessarily, I don't think we necessarily need fiber. Um, 
And then someone wants to know, will we lose minerals from our body if we do carnivore? Some people really do lose a lot of minerals on carnivore. And that's why I recommend doing the hair tissue mineral analysis just to see where you are. Sometimes you can supplement with minerals for a little bit and uh, replenish those and then you're fine. So it is worth checking in on. I see people have mineral and electrolyte problems more on carnivore than I do on keto because you're totally taking the carbs down to nothing. And I definitely am trying to keep a tight watch on my, um, my minerals right now doing carnivore again, because that's, and I'm staying on top of it, making sure I'm taking my sodium potassium every day, um, a few times a day, like three times a day, just making sure I'm staying on top of that and making sure my sleep is still good. If my sleep suffers, then, uh, that's a problem. But so far my sleep has been really, really amazing. Um, have you ever explained what your carnivore diet is? Do you ever consume anything other than liver, eggs, sardine, and ground beef? Yes, I've definitely, I talked about it a little bit earlier on the stream and you can watch for my video that'll come out next week. That'll show you seven days of carnivore. Um, let's see. What's the connection between minerals and carbs? Uh, so when we have carbs and minerals, and it's also electrolytes as well, carbohydrate, hydrate, right? It allows you when you eat carbohydrates to hold on to minerals and hold on to electrolytes. It just is, you know, for every gram of carbohydrate, your body stores three grams of water. Um, I, and it, that may be a little more or less than that, but it's about that. So think about that when you're not having the carbohydrate, your body is going to let go of water. You're going to be losing a lot of water. That's why some people will do carnivore and they'll just have a water weight whoosh. You know, they will just whoosh some weight off because they have lost a lot of water. It's not necessarily fat. Like I've seen people lose like 10 pounds in a week. Um, it's not necessarily fat that they're losing. It's water that they're losing. And when you lose water, you lose minerals and you lose electrolytes. So that's that uh, correlation. Michelle says, when you fast, do you still take your supplements? The only ones I still take are the um, digestive enzymes. Because And we talked about that in the live stream yesterday. I take the holozyme because that can actually kind of give you some blood cleansing effects, clean up your gut. If there's anything left in there, help digest anything that's left in there. It's It actually is kind of like an autophagy stimulator. And other people have talked about this before, taking digestive enzymes and fasting at the same time. And uh, it can really be helpful to, again, kind of clean up cells and to you know, all that stuff. <laughs> so I do take those, but I don't take anything else. And do I have a water distiller? No, but I get spring water delivered to the house. I would love to get a water distiller, but I just haven't kind of done that yet. But I do get spring water delivered. Um, I'm not sure I can accept that when you lose water, you use electric, you can Google it. <laughs> It's a, it's a thing. Any doctor will tell you all the keto experts say, it. look up Rob Wolf, look up like it's a, it's a thing. I promise that when you, um, take your carbs out, you're going to lose water. You're going to lose electrolytes. You're going to lose minerals. Uh, look up Morley Robbins. He's been on this channel before we've talked about it. It is, it's legit. I promise you, I'm not just making it up <laughs> and people really struggle with, um, their electrolytes. And I've seen it. I've seen people go to the hospital before doing low carb or keto or carnivore and not replenishing electrolytes. I've literally seen people end up in the emergency room, have to get IVs. Like it, it's a serious thing. So I really caution people strongly against eliminating those things. You do have to kind of see how you feel, but it can be dangerous. Our bodies run on electrolytes and yeah, pretty much any keto person, uh, most people, not, not all carnivores. There are some like anti-salt carnivores out there, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's important to keep those electrolytes replenished for sure. So, all right, guys, do you have any more questions? I just got a text message from my daughter's school. I saw it come in that they need me to come and bring something up to the school, unfortunately. So I need to do that. But if y'all have any questions, I'll hang out for another minute or so and answer them. So, stranded 360 says salt your meat. Yeah, I agree. It's like, like I said, there's some carnivores, your body will keep your electrolytes in balance. <laughs> Not true. Unfortunately, your but I, like I said, I, and people are like, no, I have been putting myself on the internet for two years. 
I get thousands of messages. I talk to tons of people and I have talked with plenty of people who didn't supplement electrolytes and ended up in the hospital. This is a real thing. It is important. I am not, a, I'm not, your body is not going to balance things naturally if you take away carbohydrates. Some people, maybe it will, but I can't, I don't do one size fits all. And if you like, you know, are always, like n not replenishing those electrolytes or it can cause problems. Sorry, I'm distracted because I'm, this person says you go back and forth changing your mind all the time. When I get new information, I share it with people. I don't, I don't change my mind all the time, but when I get new information, when I find something out, when I do an experiment, I share it. And I know we're not supposed to just do the same thing all the time. We're not just supposed to be in this linear place of like, this works, I'm doing this. And what works for you in one stage of your life may not work for you at a different stage in your life. When I was in my 20s, I ate carbs. I did kind of whatever I wanted. I stayed at a really healthy body weight. I looked good. I felt good. Um, in my 30s, that didn't work for me, right? And what worked for me in my 30s did not work for me now that I'm in my 40s. So when you when you get new information, when you change, when you go to a different stage of your life, it's really not wise to stay stuck in your ways. Like we are supposed to learn and, and get new information and change. So anybody that's like, you change your mind on fasting, you change. Yeah, I changed my mind on fasting because I was not doing it in a way that was safe for my body. And I've talked to so many women since I came out and said I had quit fasting that it did the same exact thing, right? Now I have figured out, okay, this is a little bit more optimal for me. I can do this. I'm still testing my blood. I'm still getting uh, hormone tests and thyroid tests. I'm still doing that just to make sure that what I'm doing is okay for my body. So yeah, I've changed my mind about a lot of things and I am fine with that. If I didn't change my mind about anything and I just stayed stuck in my ways all the time, then I would not be a person that's growing at all. So <laughs> yeah, I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Um, all right, guys, I really appreciate you guys being here for this live stream. If you're watching the replay, then feel free to leave me a comment. <laughs> And uh, yeah, Michael's Corner says, nobody knows everything except God. This is a lifelong journey of learning and adaptation. Yeah. So yeah, we all need to keep growing. We all need to keep learning. And if someone says like the same thing all the time and they never change, this is why people don't trust the medical establishment because the medical establishment will say, this is what's in the literature and someone comes in with all these problems and they're like, well, sorry, this is what's in the literature. Like what? Okay. That doesn't help the person who's sick and suffering. That doesn't help the person who's having trouble because it's in the literature and here's a study. No, we got to think outside the box and we have to keep learning. We have to keep growing. So anyway, um, yeah. And Esther says you can regain your fertility with fasting and you can lose it with fasting contacts matter. Yeah. Agreed. A hundred percent agreed. You can, you can do both. I mean, I've seen it work both ways. So <laughs> it's, it's, you have to be strategic and you have to understand how to do it properly. So, all right, y'all have a really great rest of your day. I got to go up to the school for my daughter now. <laughs> Um, but I will, I will, uh, be back on another time. So I'll talk to you later. Bye guys.